Hello, explorers. Welcome back. Today, we are going to take a trip to the continent of Europe. What continent? Right, the continent of Europe. Now, did you know that Europe is the sixth largest continent in the world? Right, the sixth largest out of seven. So it's not as big as some of the others, for sure. Now, I'm going to give you an interesting fact. In the United States, the country that we live in, we primarily speak the language of English. What do we speak? Right, English. Now, a long time ago, people from a place called England, which is right here, came to North America, the continent where we live, and started new towns. England is part of a country that is called the United Kingdom or the UK, and English is the language spoken there. So people from here in England went across the ocean this way, and over here, you can't see it on the map, over here is North America, far, far away. So they came across here and started speaking English over in our continent, which is why we speak English. Pretty cool, huh? All right, let me shrink my map and read to you. It says there are 44 countries in Europe. You know how the United States has 50 states? Well, Europe has 44 countries. That's a lot of countries, all with their own governments, laws, and languages. Our first stop in Europe is the United Kingdom. And remember, that's the area I just showed you right here. Okay, let me shrink this back up. Every year there on November 11th, people remember the soldiers who fought in World War I and World War II. That happened a long, long time ago. This day is called Remembrance Day. What day is it? Right, Remembrance Day. People wear or display red poppies as a sign of remembrance. So you can see red poppies are a beautiful flower. So here's some red poppies in this flower arrangement, and here's some red poppies in this flower arrangement. Now, let me explain what remembrance, because on November 11th, right, it's called Remembrance Day. So let me explain what that means. Remembrance is the act of remembering someone or something from the past. In Europe, Remembrance Day is a holiday when people remember soldiers who have died in wars. And guess what? November 11th is also a holiday in the United States, where we live. In the United States, it's called Veterans Day, a holiday when Americans also remember and thank soldiers. Now in Europe, because the countries are so small and close together, many people who live in one country can speak not only their own country's language, but also some of the different languages spoken in other countries. So here, most of us just know English. Some of us know a few other languages, but most of us just know English, and that's it. But over here in Europe, people in France might also know German, or Italy, because it's their countries that are so close to each other. So France is a country in Europe. Germany is a country in it, Europe. Here's Italy. It's shaped like a boot. It's pretty cool. And then, of course, the United Kingdom. But there are many, many more countries in Europe. Um, they're just not all named on the map. Each year in Venice, Italy, in early spring, people take part in a carnival that lasts for several days. They dress up and wear the most incredible costumes and masks. This celebration is hundreds of years old. So you can see all these beautiful costumes here and here. So let me show you our map of Europe again. I'm going to show you. Remember, Italy was the boot. So here is Italy. So this is where, whoops, this is where, this is the country within the continent of Europe where these beautiful um, celebrations are taking place. Now, I'm going to explain what a carnival is. A carnival is a big festival. It often includes music and dancing and sometimes includes people dressing up up in more parades. In the European country of Germany, there really are castles just like in fairy tales. This is the Hohenzollern Castle. Castles, castles were built for kings and queens to live in. Some kings and queens still do really live in castles. So let me show you Germany, where this castle is located. So right here, so again, this is the continent of Europe, and here is the country of Germany. And this is where that castle is located. Now, let me explain, oops, sorry about that. Let me explain a few things. Castles are large houses surrounded by thick walls and towers. Kings are male rulers of a country, and queens are female rulers. Do you know any shows or movies where you've seen kings and queens in castles? 
Maybe you said Cinderella or Sleeping Beauty. What about Snow White and the Seven Dwarves or Beauty and the Beast? <gasps> I know, you probably said Frozen. Well, those are all pretend stories with castles and kings and queens. This castle actually exists in Germany. This is a real castle. All right, let's look at the picture below. The Eiffel Tower, which is this picture right here, is in Paris, France. It is a tall metal structure that sits in the center of the city. It is higher than a 100-story building. So let me show you where the Eiffel Tower is located in Paris, France. So here is France. So this is the country that the Eiffel Tower is located in. And it's said that it's taller or higher than a 100-story building. Now look at this picture right here, this rectangle. This is a 100-story building. That means it has 100 levels in it, which is a really tall building. And you can tell how tall it is by looking at the buildings next to it. Look at how short they are. Well, guess what? The Eiffel Tower, this structure right here, is actually even taller than this building. Now, what do you think the Eiffel Tower is made of? It's actually built of thousands of pieces of metal, and it took over two years to build, so it took a pretty long time. On Canvas, I have a link that'll give you a 360 degree view of the Eiffel Tower, and it's really cool. It'll show you during the day, it shows it at night, so you'll be able to see this structure a little bit more. Um, so have your parents go to Canvas, pull up that website, and take a look, it's pretty cool. This little spiky creature called the European Hedgehog, what's it called? Yeah, the European Hedgehog, lives in people's yards, in the countryside, and in woodlands. Hedgehogs are found all across Europe. When hedgehogs are scared, they roll up into a tight ball. And this guy down here, the European Pine Martin, what's his name? Right, the European Pine Martin, has a coat of dark brown fur with a patch of white around its throat. Pine martens can climb trees. They hunt at night in dark woodland areas. Now guess what? Did you notice that I said that both the hedgehog and the pine martin live in woodland areas? Well, Europe actually has a lot of wooded areas all across the, air, the, the continent. So you can find both the European hedgehog and the European pine martin all across Europe, all over the place. Now, they're probably not in the cities, right? Because there aren't woodlands in the cities. So you have to, a woodland is an area with lots of trees. So any area that has a lot of trees, you might find one of these guys. That'd be fun to run across. It's time to get out our passport and put our stickers on for the places we visited in the continent of Europe. So you're going to turn to page four, and it says Europe right here. Okay, so pull out your stickers, and let's go through them and glue them onto the page. So we're going to start with this one right here. Remember, this took place, this is a carnival that takes place every year in early spring in Venice, Italy. So we're going to glue that one on there because that shows us that we, s that we visited Italy. And then we're going to pull over this guy. Remember, that's a really beautiful castle in Germany called the Hohenzollern. I don't know if I'm pronouncing that right. Hohenzollern Castle, all right? So that's a real castle in Germany. And then we're going to pull this over, and this is the Eiffel Tower located in France. So we have visited all these in our trip across Europe. So go ahead and glue those on as a, t as a remembrance for the time that we spent in each of these areas of Europe. Okay, we're back to color some more continents. So I want you to pull this sheet out where you've already col colored. What continent is purple? Think. It's the continent we live on. Hopefully you said North America. And then what continent did we color red? Think. Hopefully you said South America. Yes. All right, now we're going to color the continent of Europe. And we're going to color it green. So go ahead and pull out your green crayon. All right, now we're going to color Europe green. Now, Europe, coloring Europe green is going to be a little tricky because Europe sort of runs into the next, another continent, which is Asia. So we're just going to do our best. So we're going to start over here, right here, and you can start coloring this part green. 
Mine's a very bright green. You can use whatever green you have. We can't forget the United Kingdom, which is right here. And it includes this little guy right here. And I believe these guys up here. And we're going to keep coloring. And then here's Italy. It's the boot. It's kind of hard to tell. I just kind of colored over it. And it includes all of this up here. Good. And then we're going to come back down here and color all this into here. And as far as I can tell, I believe it comes down to about here. And then I think it comes back up to about here. So just do your best. And like I said, it, it looks like it should all be one land mass, but it's split into two different continents. So it's something like this. So color Europe green. And then save your paper because we're going to keep coloring these continents on this sheet. You guys are doing a great job.